Bonjour! Bonsoir! Chef Raphael is back! Happy New Year! Happy New Year, Jean-Charles. So exciting! We're gonna have a lot of fun today, dear friends, for this wine style. This is so exciting because we're gonna go in the deep history of France again. And what are we gonna prepare, Chef? Well, today we're gonna to be making a uh, Bernays sauce, it's, uh, uh, which is a uh, base of shallots, champagne vinaigrette, peppercorn, and tarragon. We'll put a little bit of thyme in there too, just to get... We're gonna show you one of the most exciting sauce to make, to accompany your beef, your meat, whatever you decide, it could be your asparagus, Bernays has a big history and we'll tell you about it. But a toast, because life is about wine and food, not reverse. You know, we like wine first. This is from the south of France, not too, too far away from the Béarn, where the Béarnais was created. And this is our wonderful Forton Pays d'Oc wine Chardonnay, a great coastal selection, a wine which is meant to bring a lot of what the south of France has to offer. And in January, it's all about the citrus, the green apple, the white pear, a little bit of rosemary, mm -hmm. maybe. A little bit of tarragon, like you're gonna have exactly. in the sauce. Mmm. Yeah. Richness, the volume and the flavors of the south, the great aromas of the ocean. Yep. So, dear friends, Béarnais, how did it happen? Mr. Collinet, a very famous chef, and we're going back to the 19th century, 1836 to be precise, in Paris, was pre preparing in the pavillon Henry IV, where Henry IV, as our king used to live, an amazing sauce. And suddenly an accident happened, and it became the sauce Béarnaise, because Henry IV was from the region of France, the Béarn. And you know, can you believe that this chef, Mr. Collinet, invented as well at the same time? Mm. Puff potatoes. The one we love to have as well with Béarnais. So, so it became a big tradition for over 180 years now in France to have Béarnais sauce. So accompanying meat, it's unusual that we do a sauce, which is not a wine-based sauce for meat, but this is phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, so, Shall we show you how we do it? So this one, so the Bernays sauce, like I say, is I have a reduction, prepared, ready to go. I did a reduction of tons of shallots, black peppercorn, bay leaf, thyme, and tarragon. And you just reduce it down until it gets the like nice acidic, all the concentrate flavors from all the, from the shallots and the bay leaf, etc. So this one, you just gotta wanna use a little bit. And I have, Five egg yolks that I separate. Just a beautiful yolk. Mm -hmm. And dear friends, look at this yellow. They're so I mean, as we've had many painters and artists, there's many different shades of yellow. Look at the intensity of our chicken. It's been very cold in California, so the chicken have not produced a ton of egg, but the few they have very gave good. them all their love and yeah. intensity. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> so this one is the same, almost the same process as making Hollandaise. Hollandaise, yeah. So yeah. that's the trick. What is the difference between Hollandaise and Béarnaise, right? Yeah, well the difference is the holiday sauce. That one is just, you finish with a little bit of paprika, smoked Spanish paprika, whatever you want to put into it, and a squeeze of lemon. A lot of people like to put a little lemon juice in here, but it doesn't make sense because it's very acidic from the champagne. So that's the difference. It was a champagne reduction versus a lemon juice. And we've used the Buena Vista champagne because we thought we needed a little history of California and friends blended together. So I just want to use just a little bit before I start working my eggs. Just a little bit. And then you can always add a little bit more as, um, when it's done. And then you can just kind of go from there. So, so you way, go clockwise, huh? Either way. Either way? Yeah. So this way I need to cook the... the, the the bain-marie. Yes, the bain-marie. So the bain-marie is basically hot water and a saucepan on top, and here you go. 
So it's very gentle that Very way. gentle, yeah. And then you can go back and forth, move it around, and if it, once you start it, the body is gonna get like really nice thick, then, uh, and then it's just gonna go from and there. And for all of you, dear friend, male, if you're not in the kitchen and, you know, the lady or your significant other love to cook and you want to impress them, you want to know how to make a hollandaise, a mayonnaise, and a bearnaise. And this has been my training. Those are the only three things I know how to make in the kitchen, but it's very impressive because you take it to the finish line in a very different way. Yeah. So you got to go gently, chef. Explain. These what you need to like, seriously, you need to like be gentle and cook. Make sure you cook the jokes. If you don't cook the jokes enough, they'll, it'll break. As soon as you start adding the butter, it'll break quick. So you need to like, make sure you cook, cook the jokes. And uh, this, we're getting close. It's getting nice and foamy. You see that foam? Dylan, you got to get closer here. Look at that beautiful foam. You see how gorgeous? Mm. And you don't want to stop whisking it because if you start whisking, it'll scramble. And then That's it. And it's getting... I've made so much scramble eggs in my life that way, as a mistake, that it's not even funny. So, really practice, but I gotta tell you, it adds such a dimension, and many people think Bearnaise is very heavy, it has a lot of calories. It's really not too bad at all. No, not too when bad. When you think about it, it's a bunch of egg yolks and base butter. <laughs> a little better, of course, but you know, what else? <laughs> and a little bit of good yeah, champagne, and here we go. But you know, it goes very well. Like, we can use it, like you said, with beef. It goes amazing. Beef, a little maybe, if you know, those steak and freeze, just a little bit of a holiday mm. sauce in there, or the Bernays, of course, we'll be making. Uh, French fries, steak and frites, it'll be amazing. The lemon yon, pretty good. Yeah, so. Salmon, even do, better. And you don't put a touch of mustard in it. None in this recipe. Yeah. With Hollandaise, you can. And I really recommend a Dijon mustard okay. in it. Or bon mustard for the Hollandaise to, to build that foundation and that great flavor of the mustard. After three minutes, this is the result. We're going to be looking for it. This color, uh, this thin color, a little bit of this thin color, but it's still, it's going to be like nice. This was like nice and cut, and that's what you're looking for. I love it. And nice and creamy, of course. Right? and have Bernays and french fries. And I'm gonna push it, because I think if you love popcorn, who doesn't? And we'll tell you more about popcorn soon. It is phenomenal with it. So there's a lot of rendition. There's even Bernays with truffles, which I'd love to. So you just cut a few truffles, or shave it, on top of the Bernays sauce before serving. It's amazing as well. So. When you master it, then you can play with all kinds of evolution of it. Yeah. So see this one? You want to uh, add me a little bit of butter, chef? Oh, of course. Well, I'm not the chef. I'm the zoo, 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 zoo chef. Good. How much each time? Just go each time. Time to time, we'll put butter in there. Dylan, are you sure you don't want to come closer? He's afraid to gain weight by just looking. We know that. So this one, if it gets too thick like this, you want to stop, and then what we're gonna do? We're gonna add a little bit of um, a little bit of water because because it's too thick and it'll like it'll probably like break, you know. You gotta be careful with this. They're tricky, but it's easy. See? It requires there. constant attention. It requires constant love, constant and love. passion, and slow movements to get to your end result. More butter, senor. <laughs> Voila! Woo! Not too fast. It'll break people fast. He is good. See? He's in full control. A little more. more. Slowly, slowly. You tell me. Ooh, la, 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 la. Hey, you never get to play with butter so much, huh? I know we've done a lot of cookies, a lot of phenomenal recipes at Christmas, New Year's. We are mid-January, but it's yes. exciting to learn how to do this. A little more? Yeah, a little bit more. Let's go. And that's going to be perfect now. And this one, I'm using clarified butter, or you can use whole butter. Okay. Either way. You add a little piece by piece until the And milk. this one is clarified? It's clarified butter, yes. So once again, I got to taste it. They probably know it's getting a little bit more vinaigrette. Touch of vinaigrette. The chef instinct. He knows before you A little bit taste. of water in there, and they're going to finish it. And I'm gonna use nice uh, 
Now you finish with some salt, just about a half teaspoon of salt, pepper, and fresh tarragon. That's the key. You know, fresh tarragon in it. Whisk it all in. And if you all go to Morton's with Chris, the Palm, amazing steakhouse around the United States and around the world, this is really that recipe that you will be able to enjoy. So remember, be audacious, be wild. When you start to enjoy Bernays, you cannot live without it. You and you're gonna want it everywhere. Let's you put a nice balance of the... Mm. Oh, he mastered it! As we say in good English, he nailed it. Oh! What you want is texture on the mouth. I'm gonna use your nice favorite collection of mm. your plates. So it's more butter, it's good balance oh, right there, huh? It's the perfect balance, okay. chef. God, I miss you all this time. Yeah, right? I've been doing, dear friends, at Christmas time, Hollandaise, Béarnaise, and Mayonnaise, and Mignonette, and Vinaigrette. I've been playing on the sauce like crazy, and wine sauce, and chef was away for a few weeks because, you know, he was on a romantic trip as he loves to be. You send me a friend. He disappears, so you know, he had to escape. And I couldn't call him for advice, so I missed many times, but I'm so glad you're back because... I am back. Look at this. So oh. This one, she did a nice roasted Brussels sprouts, very simple. Just cut them in half, toss them in olive oil, salt, mm. pepper, olive oil, throw them in the, in, the, um, in the oven at 400 degrees for like 10 minutes, and they're done, they just come out like that. Well, and Chef, you know, I don't want us to forget. Dylan, look at this beautiful bottle of wine. This is the Réserve de Bonpa. We back in the 1318, the early 14th century, when the popes went to the Rhone Valley. This is an amazing bottle of Côte du Rhone. As we know, the alchemy of the great Rhone grape varieties blended in this bottle of wine with this dish will be amazing because you have the spice, the pepperiness, and all the great flavors in that wine, chef, captured, that will marry beautifully this dish. Mm. It looks big and powerful, but it's not. The beauty, it's long, but still very light. So it works very well, vegetables and sauce without being too tannic. You don't want two tannic wines with that kind of dish, because then I think it really conflicts with it. And then just to comment to that, there are a couple pieces of uh, pork belly in there. Oh, 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 oh. And we we're having go. we having the feast. See now, Cordurone, Berlin. So now nice and creamy, oh. the sauce. You know, mm -mm -mm. he did it. Yep, he did it. Wow, look at this Bernays. She is melting. She wants to be leaked the right way. Do you mind, chef? Look at this! Mmm! <laughs> mmm! Chef, deliciousness? It's not even delicious, it's orgasmic. Oh, wow. Wow! So, thank you. Next to your bedside, you're gonna have Bernays. It will change your evening. Dear friends, so much fun to be together! Thank Welcome you. back, Chef! Thank you.